Hello, this is Philemon with another episode of Darksiders 2. And we just got a key. It's a very nice key. Uh, a key that can do something similar to uh, what the horn did in the first game. Uh, the animation is a bit more extreme this time, I think is the better term for it. Uh, also, it would appear that I have no health. Um, so that's fun. Uh, let's see. Toggle overworld. Zoom out. Where do I need to go? That is an excellent question. Why do I not? Oh, oh, I gotta go to the Lost Temple. Which is past the Bane Wood. Or the Bane's Wood. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. Uh, did basically all I could in the Weeping Crag. Uh, there is a side quest I know I could undergo now. But I just think I'm just going to get going. This episode is already late as it is. I don't need to spend time doing pointless side quests or nearly pointless side quests. You know, it's one of the things that comes up with uh, structuring the game in the way that they did, where even things like uh, doing the shaman's side quest, that item is going to become irrelevant relatively quickly um it's not necessarily a flaw that it happens but it's a consideration that has to be made in terms of both game design and uh playthrough where oh boy well that was fast <laughs> <laughs> okay oh jeez i still don't have health uh all right let's try and load me up a little bit better than i was wow that was nasty okay and i have absolutely no reaper gauge i thought ah! <laughs> please health any dog sniggered Da, da. <laughs> Put an explosive failure of an opening sequence. Uh, okay. Maybe if I use secondary weapon a little bit more. It's been a bit. Okay, level up. Level up gives me full health. Nice. And I got a steel point, which I will allocate here in a second. Okay, okay. So anyway, as I was saying, uh, things like I got these really cool gauntlets from defeating that first uh, world boss. I'm looking to get some kind of a uh, equipment upgrade from doing the shaman side quest if uh, I have the time, or if I can find the last item, I should say, which based on how the uh, side quest had gone to this point is more than likely an item I can find in this next dungeon. Um, but the idea being that within maybe another two dungeons, that item becomes entirely obsolete because of how the level scaling goes or just finding something it turns out to be way better for no reason other than uh, it's got better stats or the stats that it's providing aren't unique to that item. Uh, that's one of the... Er, giving an item certain unique properties is a good way of giving it a lifespan that extends past... Uh, what could be considered its useful time. Uh, and I've had... I've heard thoughts on this from something like uh, Diablo 2 and its itemization system, where there are certain legendaries that you can get in that game, say, uh, 
easy example is the Mage Fist, I believe it's called. It's uh, plus 20% damage on fire skills and a whole bunch of extra mana regeneration. And it is, if you're playing a fire-themed sorceress, it's an item that you can get around level 20 to 30, or at least that's the time at which it wants to drop in that game. Uh, where the maximum level is 99, and it will continue to be good for that character for the entire rest of your playthrough of that game just because of its unique item properties. Sure, it's not going to be giving you the most defense that uh, an item possibly could, Um Technically, based on some of the things that they've done, there are ways around that, and that I'm not really going to get into that at this point, but uh, more relevant to the discussion I'm trying to have is that it becomes not about uh, how powerful the item is based on when, when you get it, but what it can do for you. And this is where some games, uh, thinking kind of specifically about something like Diablo 3, especially after they did their expansion, where all of the items, uh, you unlocked a new tier of item, and then you unlocked a new tier of basically the same item over again. And the only way to have success in the game at that point is to make sure that your item is at its strongest possible version, as opposed to finding a really good item that can stick with you and become kind of a signature. Um, it's... It is entirely a design philosophy question. I wouldn't... There's a part of me that wants to call it an issue, and that's not being entirely fair to uh, that style of play, because I'm there are plenty of people who enjoy that kind of thing, and they're certainly bringing it back for Diablo 4, as far as I'm concerned, where it the highest level, it's looking for a way to make the best version of whatever thing you got, where it's no longer about just finding the thing. Uh, the, the finding of the thing doesn't seem to have become... Or, how should I say this? So, again, the comparison becomes in Diablo 2, where all you needed to do for certain items was to just find the thing. Uh, and I go back to the Mage Fist, where uh, what, in order to get it at basically its best properties, all you needed to do was just find the item at some point in your career. Hey, doesn't that uh, sprite look... Or not sprite, sprite's a bad word. Uh, model, the 3D model uh, looks somewhat familiar, people who have been following me on this journey since the first game. Um, what was I saying? The... Once you have acquired your mage, mage Fist, you don't need to find another Mage Fist. Or, and that goes with literally any object or legendary item that you could want. Uh, once you have the Sanders Riprap or uh, any other of a series of names that I could rattle off that mean very little to someone who doesn't know anything about Diablo. Um, you know, you find the runes and you get the right socketed armor and you put it in the one time and maybe for the purposes of something like online dueling, you need the absolute best roll of that armor that you could possibly get, but so you have to keep socketing runes until you find the absolute best one. But, the big but is, why do you do that, Death? 
Why do you not just climb? Okay. Uh, for the most part, you only need to worry about getting the item the one time. Whereas in the Diablo 3 mindset, which I would say has become a bit more common, I haven't played uh, something like... Uh, I haven't played Diablo 4. I don't know if I plan to play Diablo 4. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make is that I'm not heavy enough? Yeah, I'm heavy enough. Okay. But I need to be on that. How? What happens if I do this? This raises. Okay. What does that do for me? Oh. Hey, look, a stone. Uh... Uh, okay, okay, okay. I remember now. I remember now. Hold on. I can get my, myself out of here now. All right, uh, back to the conversation about uh, loot mechanics and failing at jumping. So the path that it seems like the ARP genre is going towards is... Um, just looking for those bigger damage numbers. Uh, in some ways, to me personally, it feels a bit like uh, st uh, certain JRPGs where uh, the scaling kind of just gets out of control from where you are at the beginning of the game to where you are at the end. And I should say, I'm not against the idea of uh, small numbers to start and then big numbers at the end, but come on. When you're getting into the billions of damage, when you start at maybe seven, that's a bit extreme. And that's quite a bit where Diablo gets to in terms of, or Diablo 3 got to uh, at the end there and people making builds based on stuff like that. Um, please don't fall out, uh, Boulder. Thank you. Um, so, giving something a unique property, but having that property be the thing that is strong enough to carry it through later into the game I personally believe is the better way to go because it makes each item feel more unique and special when you find it, uh, especially with some of the lower level stuff that can be super important. Um, but that is just my opinion, and I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, so it that was a long drawn out rant about uh, how it's hard to balance these things. It is, I think that's the best way to put my feelings on the whole subject is making the game fun and making it, oh, that thing respawned. I think I can just rush past, past it without anything too bad happening. Hey, what's up here? Um, no go up, not over. Controls can be just a little finicky. Uh, I think I can, yeah, just go up. Uh, I know what I need here, but I don't have it yet. Frustration. On. Ooh. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I just remember. No, I, this is the page I want to be on. I can equip this thing. So we're on this, and this is better in every way. So that I will take. <laughs> yep, lit literally better in every way. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this is going to lower it halfway, and then this lowers it halfway. Yeah. Okay, fine. Fine. 
come back when we have another of the uh, puzzle slash traversal things that this game will give us. Yeah, <laughs> those are some good numbers right there. Those are some happy numbers. Oof. Based on how hard those guys were for me at the beginning of this section, that feels good. Yeah, so game to balance is something that needs to have a serious amount of consideration put into it, and I'm not opposed to how this game did it, and I'm not opposed to how most games do it. I just... I personally feel that it's something that the players should be aware of as well uh, as they're going through something, as they make decisions to say, well, is this game going to want me to hold on to every special thing in order to make sure that I'm doing the best that I can? Or is it expecting me to just do upgrades continuously until uh, it it puts some kind of a limiter on you. Uh, it's a thought. Alright. I think... Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So, this thing right here uh, is what happens when... Or this is where you go to after you have assembled your first 10 pages of the Book of the Dead. Uh, it has a number of pretty nice pieces of loot inside that will be worth looking at. Again, it comes into that issue of how do you balance loot and making sure that your player is enjoying finding your loot. Uh... But I think I have talked far too much about that without really getting anywhere. <laughs> so I found your brings back memories to see it again. Nice. Uh finished that. Hey Harvenstone. Construct, Construct Sentinels. Uh, a sad thing destroying what the maker worked so hard to craft. But these days it must be done. You'll find the yep. okay. so one Good luck to you. Three pieces, three uh, dungeons that have to be completed before the final dungeon, so at least we'll have it going into that. May I beg you another favor? What and what am I getting in return? <laughs> Other than a little bit of experience and money. When I was young. I thought it lost, like the temple. But now that you found one, the other will follow. Uh-huh. Sure. I've been here but the once. And what do you know of the temple? So, construct tipping instead of cow tipping? Ha ha ha, how clever. Anyway. So now we get to play with a bit of a fun mechanic of driving the uh, creatures around for more than just one... Oh boy. Uh... One small adventure. I should really be using my secondary weapon more. You know, it's the thing that actually does damage because I haven't gotten any kind of a true upgrade to my primary weapon this whole time. I mean, there's been a couple, but each of these secondaries is providing such a massive power boost compared to that little thing. Uh, okay. I think it's on the outside of the stairs. Yes, it is. Like, if I could get a possessed pair of scythes, that would be amazing. Yes, pick that up. Uh, ooh, health on crit is nice, but mine is just better. Like, if I could sacrifice that health on crit to this legendary item, that would be amazing. More health. Yay, more health. <laughs> Need health. Definitely. Definitive Edition was less of a joke than I was giving it credit for, and I wouldn't say I'm regretting it, but I'm not exactly thinking it was my best decision. But if I'm going to be playing the Definitive Edition, I should be playing it on the Definitive Difficulty, right? Right? 
Yep. All right. Wakey, wakey. Fun how their face is always stored in their chest cavity somewhere. Alrighty. Yeah, and they have the fun property of being able to clear out the yellow corruption. Very specifically, the yellow corruption. For whatever reason, the greenish jade looking ones are just too powerful. Yep. You, uh, you hang tight there, buddy. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, so I think this is one of those corrupted sentinels. Uh, really, all it does is generate enemies to fight. So you just kind of have to take it out with the uh, gun whenever it's not shielding itself. And yet another thing I should say that they included the gun and they made it a legitimate strategy this time. Whereas last time, it really was just kind of a showpiece. Uh, I found one use for it, but that was it. As opposed to now, when there are actually enemies that are vulnerable to its uh, attacks. Okay, where were the scythes? These are yes, please. Thank you. More health, please. Health? Anywhere? Health? Please? No? Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Alright, so obviously we have to go and wake up one of those constructs, but the question is, where is that construct? Also, chest behind this. Can't forget. Uh. Oh, look! A construct to wake up. But, oh no! The bridge is out! How will we get the construct and recreate the bridge? Uh, tune in next time. Just giddy. Right. Yeah, nimble death. Not so nimble maker creations. Well, certainly tough, but not so nimble. Yep. Oh. Yep. Oh. Ooh, okay. Fine. Thank you for revealing the Boatman coin game. Uh, make sure I'm not missing anything else while I'm down here. Uh, not that I think I can. Oh, no, I can. I can cross. Uh, just the one Boatman coin? That would appear to be the case. So let's surface and find my way out of here. Simple rock. Uh, although... Yeah, this... This was leading me somewhere different. And why did I not check the map? Um, okay. Seriously. There we go. Jump. There we go. Any good? Ooh. Well, no. I say ooh, but health on execute is only worthwhile when I'm able to use the uh, glory kill. The, uh, you know, press B to uh, destroy instantly. So that does not pop up nearly often enough, I believe, to justify that decision. Now to wake this guy up, because he is the key to getting the bridge to pop back up. Because that cool power arm thing that we did in order to... Um, there we go, yeah. Yeah, you can use that at will, as opposed to only once it's been seated. Okay. Raise the bridge!
Yeah, not nearly as uh, difficult a puzzle as it could have been. But oh no, I am going to be swarmed by enemies. Whatever shall I do? Oh, right. I've got this. Goodbye. Let's go with they never stood a chance. They can still do damage, though. That is, uh, especially the uh, not melee ones. The rock slingers can absolutely be hitting me while I'm doing this. But, you know, giant rock monster versus tiny rock monsters. Typically, the giant rock monster wins. Alright, chest please. Ooh, special chest. What do you got? What do you got? Ooh, okay, some boots. Better boots! And they were actually better from the better loot table that you're supposed to be able to get from one of those chests. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. It's complete luck of the draw. Alright, so now we can actually go this way and then open up the next area. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, come back. Do that. Uh, detach. Shoot. Yeah, gotta break that first. Oh, no, no, come on. There we go. There we go. Also can't use the gun right now, so I gotta jump off. Bam. There is something down here. I am too curious not to check. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Every nook and cranny. Yeah, you gotta wonder when it's not a true bottomless pit, if they developers decided to hide something down there. More often than not, the answer is yes, but it is also still very likely to be no. Uh, games I can kind of think of that with are... Uh, well, that happens a lot in tutorial levels, I think is one of the more prevalent cases. Uh, like, oh, learn to jump! which nowadays is not nearly uh, as confusing of a task as it seemed to be back in, say, the uh, early to mid-2000s. Um, uh, the example I'm thinking of here is Jack 2, where, or even Jack 1 and Jack 2, where uh, they had some portion of a level that was very specifically designed to get you acquainted with the mechanics that you would be using. So jumping, rolling, uh, attacking. So super low stress areas that, uh, I think in the Jack 2 example, they don't even attack you. Um, until you're almost the entire way done with it. Okay, can we dismount without... Oh, jeez. Alright, well now I know why this isn't a bottomless pit. Uh, but yeah, so... A lot of times in those sections, they would hide uh, some little tidbit in the tutorial area on one of those jumps where it's like, oh, if you don't make this jump, don't worry, there's a bottom at the there is actually a bottom this time, so that you don't, uh... Oops, I think I went the wrong way. I went the wrong way. Uh... So if you mess up, it's not too bad, and you can just kind of reset yourself for the next attempt. Uh, as opposed to... Any time where that would not be true. So, those kinds of areas are fairly typical, I'd say, for having... Um, some item that you can acquire at the bottom of the easy pit. 
anywhere else, it's kind of a case by case basis. And that again just goes to development and how do you want to spread out your cool collectibles or loot or whatever. Okay, so now that's open, and surprise, surprise, we need to bring our golem friend. Nope, nope, that's... <laughs> I did not want to smack you with my hammer. No, no, wait, wait. Go back, go back. Still learning the controls this guy's due to me. Although, I think we only really ever use this traversal method in one more place in the game, and that's basically it because of the what I would refer to as modular nature of this game. Uh, the chapters are very distinct from each other. Um, and tr there's plenty of places that have a lot of crossover between uh, the traversal items that you'll be using. So uh, like those portal spots that keep showing up, those ones are certainly not going away by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so, er, we will find the item that is relevant to that at some point. Uh, but more to what I'm referring to now is that uh, the... How do I say this? This one, this one in particular, is very in the nature of the world that it's a part of. Uh, so, even though we're going to other places that, in theory, were designed and left uh, ruins behind by the makers, this is really the only area, or this is the area with the most prominent maker tech. So I, th outside of this realm, I really don't think we're going to be running into them more. Ah, <sighs> yep, these guys are fun. All right, so make sure to take them out and Ugh. They did such a better job in this game of giving you attack diversity with how you can do things and put together actual combos. Okay, I need you to focus on that for right now because I want to break it apart. Fight doesn't end until all of them are gone, so gotta be careful about <laughs> taking out the right thing. Uh, anyway, but yeah, just... The attack diversity is so much better. Instead of going, you know, hit, pause, hit, 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 and that being really the only way that you can take things out for all of the game. Like, once you've unlocked that combo, you don't do anything else. And, again, giving the uh, secondary weapons the different feeling. So even though there are other uh, two-handed uh, secondaries that I can be using, uh, the glaive styles and axe styles in particular, <sighs> got to... Uh, I need to heal. Come on. There you go. Okay. Uh, they have different fighting styles than the hammer, so... There's a few shared animations between them, uh, but, so like, that one, that one's absolutely shared. Uh, but they still feel somewhat unique overall, which is awesome. Ah. Nope, nope. There we go. Ooh, level up. Nice. I just remembered I need to spend my uh, skill points. Excuse me. Level up mid-combat, no big thing. <laughs> Nothing you can be concerned about here. Uh, ooh. Uh, let's do it. Oh, okay, right. It's similar to this defense one, but not quite as good, I would say. Um, craft generation is increased. 
chance to be slowed. Ooh, slowed is good. A critical hit. And it was explosion. Yeah, I like explosions. I dodged too early, but was lucky enough to have healing coming to me. There we go. That was nice. All right, next. Arr. Oh, hi. Another one of these. Oop. Oh, no. I missed my cycle. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Okay, cool. Ow. I don't think the spike uh, attack is quite the magnetic effect it did in the actual boss fight, so those don't seem to be doing nearly as much damage as they had. I spoke too soon. Okay. <laughs> Ow. Boom. Okay. Are these better? Eh, debatable. Oh. Oh! Well then. Uh, I will pick them up for fodder for other things. Ooh, nice. Better loincloth. Uh, always break the boxes, because you never know when there's going to be boatman coins around. It is kind of nice to have a protagonist that changes as the game goes on. Kind of gives you that sense of uh, fulfillment and... Uh, I guess adventure is not a bad word for it. Uh, just a sense of uh, advancement. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, it gives, gives the player a bit of a sense of advancement that uh, what they're doing is having an impact on the life of their main protagonist. Also, very much still keeping an eye out for uh, the compass that Pup wanted us to check for. Okay. One little making sure that you understand the mechanics section. Jumping back and forth. Uh, 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 uh. Alright, so that's up there, but how do I get up there? Probably by doing this. Hey, that thing I was just saying, checking to make sure you know the mechanics section. Oh, nope, one more. There we go. And then you are there. But how do I get there? Do I just go like this? Sometimes it is just that simple. And it's an upgrade. Excellent. Uh... Hey, look, that compass I was talking about. Nice. This is a pleasant little grotto. Nothing could possibly ever go bad here. Okay. Again, check the boxes. You never know what goodies they might have inside. <gasps> I am out. Yay, I got a heal. Alright. Certainly not the hardest puzzle in the world. Question is where do I go? Ah, there we go. Ah. I do so I love this little bit of the animation, so as I just jump up, look at how he does the 
two uh, small grabs there. It's like, oh, I gotta find something before just sliding back down. And it's so convenient. Yep, er, er, uh, so convenient that his claws are just that sticky that he can. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> This is where the puzzle gets a bit weird, because you need both of these in order to complete it. So you use one to activate the elevator for the other one. Gotta make sure to get off of this one while the elevator is still active. In order to lead this one over to a different destination. Uh... Come on. There we go. Right. Ugh. This one is funky. This one is truly funky. So yeah. We use that to get there. And then... We use you... over here because that section is not connected look at the dead page okay but that lets you do that and then get off get off and make sure that I'm not okay so I will get that Book of the Dead page. Um, yeah, I think that one's a little tricky, but it's... Uh, you can still get back there after both of these have been activated. You just have to follow the chain in order to do it. And then apparently there is a chest down here. Nice. Ooh, nice! And I am completely full health to the point where I can't even pick that up if I wanted to. All of my extra health bars are satisfied. Well, not full health bars, but good enough for my purposes. Okay. Uh, we do this, we do that. Right. Walking on chain is faster than dashing on chain. But then now this is open. Book of the Dead page. Thank you. Five of ten. We are halfway to being able to open that tomb I was talking about before. Alright, and then able to jump over here. Now that this pathway is opened. Sprawling landscape. Oh boy, that's some big stalker there. I need to be better about remembering to dodge these. Whew. Yeah, this thing has truly massive crit power. Uh, oh, well... Why not? Sure, it was a waste, but I'm playing the game, not you. Oh, come on, and there we go. Yep, doing the truly impossible thing of going around an outside radius of the building. Inside radius is almost plausible, but an outside radius... Eh, not so much. You know what? Let's have some fun.
Wow, that was fine. Maybe I should have saved it. Maybe I should have saved it. Ah. Ah. Ah, yay, yay. Oh, right. And these are the ones that can power themselves up. Maybe I shouldn't be putting myself in a corner. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Well, that was lucky. Yeah, sadly. Well, no, those are good fodder for future, uh, Dispo or not disposable. The uh, the other word. Sorry, a uh, bit of an adrenaline rush there that went to my head. Uh, what, what is the word I would call that? Uh, possessed, possessed weapons. Ow! Did you stop that? Yeah, I think damage-wise that one is slightly better, but I th uh, I'm going to stick with my Wrath on uh, hit. Or Wrath on crit. There we go. Okay. And look at that! Another Book of the Dead page! How oh, wonderful. Okay, and then... Come on. There we go. That was in a bit of an awkward location. Come here, you. Excellent. Well, those are a couple of big boys. Yeah, a little bit, quite a, yeah, I would say quite a substantially bit tougher. Oh boy. Oh, this could be a meat grinder. They just had to appear in a pair, didn't they? So that they can combo their uh, animations on me for extra frustration. So I do basically nothing but dodge around them the entire time. Yep, like that. Oh boy. And I do not have Reaper mode back for a while yet. Okay. Ugh. All right. Maybe I should try thinking a bit more strategically. Ow. Ay, ay, oh. Again, see what I mean about being able to combo on animations with each other? Ay, ay, ay. Even just the initial hit of that damage does 196 health. Ay, no, I don't have any health refills left. I should be doing this a lot more. Okay, one down. Oh, and now he has little friends? Why does he get little friends? Explode! Worth every penny. <laughs> every skill point penny. You know what I mean. Go away! 
I am amazed that that was successful. Thank you, autosave. Yes, please, autosave. Uh, ooh, 4% extra experience. Uh, okay. Couple of nice little upgrades. Gotta settle a little bit after that excursion. Hope that I can find a few more health refills, unless the boss is just gonna be super easy. Which I doubt. No, so much for that plan. Hmm. That looks somewhat familiar. It is good to have a consistent layout, or yeah, I think layout's a good word for it, between your uh, creatures, so have a little bit of an idea of what to expect. Hey, uh, uh, hey, hey there. Hi. Hi. You're big. You are very large and corrupted. The Construct Hulk. Oh, oh. Hello, explosives. I wanted to pick you up. Ow. Okay. Right, no double jump. Gotta remember, no double jump. Really? Only on your side of the arena? It's so far away, though. More want to fall now? Places I can actually easily reach? No? Fine. Oh! oh exploded midair! Alright. You. Come here. Attach. Destroy. Haha! <laughs> Oh, hey. Thanks for knocking that off for me. Woo. Aha! Ah! Okay, take out your friends for me. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Ow. Wow. Please be last cycle. Come on, come on. Make sure to hit the cork. Come on. No. No. I was a fool. I was a fool. This is technically doing damage. Oh, oh, oh that was dumb. Uh, oh, hey. Hold that for me, would you? Uh, got it. <laughs> yeah. Skeletal Axe of Rending. Why does this one get the cool exposition? A tale often told amongst the dead plains concerns a proud warrior who boasted often of his skill, only for it to be later revealed that the braggart 
and claimed the victories of others for his own. As punishment, the warrior was transformed into a magical axe, doomed forever to assist others in gaining the glory he had so wrongfully sought. Although this axe does not strike as hard as many other weapons, it steals the vitality from those it strikes and transfers it to the wielder, strengthening him whilst weakening his foes. Critical strikes with the axe rend the foe for even greater amounts of stolen health. <laughs> okay, then. So what was I doing here? What? What was the purpose of all of this? Right, right. Okay. So. Wow. Look at that sliver of health I have left. I basically have as much as the boss did when I was able to knock it down that last time. Uh, so. What needs to happen is we need to have a bridge be formed in between where uh, we are to get to the Great Forge. Because we are not, or er, the the brother sister duo are not actually using the Great Forge. They are using the prelude, the preamble to the actual Great Forge, and the what they need is uh, is a way to reach the forge proper in order to finish their last great work. Wakey, wakey, buddy! You've got one last job to do. How you doing, Slim? How does that work? Yeah, one of the very, very few uncorrupted constructs left in the land. an interesting term for something that was clearly carved. You will need my help. This place, what was it? That is a great question. Tell you. Why? On the tip of my oh, tongue. it's a memory thing, not a... My tongue seems to be elsewhere. No, I think I just saw it. Will Looks to still be uh, in your... Yeah. Or, I mean, a part of your mouth. No, no, don't, don't leave. Don't leave. There was, there was a chest right behind him. Hold on, little one. Why would, why would you leave with him? Please tell me that I have a waypoint that I can just teleport right back to that part of the dungeon with. It was an epic chest. Why would you do that to me? Well, yeah. In common with corruption. It's one of the tricks of uh, these kinds of uh, you know, it's kind of the mutually assured destruction thing. You want it to be a protector, but in protecting it must also destroy, so if it is not willing to destroy, then how can it protect? It's a... Alright, please, please have given me a quick warp back to that part of the dungeon. You frustrations! <laughs> so now I gotta backtrack my whole way... Well, I've mentioned it before, this game is fairly good about giving you a kind of a circular path, so where you end in a dungeon is not necessarily that far away from the entrance so that it's easy to get back. But why? Why would you 
so clearly put a chest behind that and then force the player to leave that area and have to come back for it. It's such a tease. Oh, hey. How you doing, friend? You, uh, still just kind of hanging out? It's a good thing those ones weren't built with a whole lot of sentience. Uh, because I feel like I would be committing some kind of heinous crime by just forcing them to sit in some fixed position for the rest of their unnatural lives. <sighs> okay, this is a bit further of a backtrack than I was thinking it was. The prize had better be darn good in there. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Although we are getting just a bit more of that taste of what I was talking about. Well, this is more linear, actually. We did a couple of fun turns and roundabouts, but going straight from the beginning of the dungeon to the end of the dungeon, if we didn't have to do most of those puzzles in between, uh, as you can see, the dungeon is actually set out fairly linearly instead of more circular. But when you give the player the ability to fast travel, does it really matter if the dungeon is circular? So why, or just, you could set up something similar to what uh, Darksiders 1 had, where you just have a warp out zone instead of, again, forcing the player to leave during a cutscene that they can't skip because that was the whole point of being in the dungeon. To make them have to go backtrack all the way here just to find out what was in this chest and it was just a normal version of, I, okay, fine. You gave me something better than what I had, and it looks cooler. I'm still not happy with you, because that was random loot. There's no reason to hide that random loot there to make me think that, oh, this could be one of the really cool chests that I could get something out of. <sighs> Alright, let's fast travel. So that I have a better memory of what I would need to do next. But uh, we will be continuing uh, this part of the game the next time. So. That was a fun dungeon. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed watching. I have enjoyed playing. And until next time, this is Philemon signing out.